in this video, we're going to be tackling the elite code question, kth largest element in an array. This is a very common real world problem. This is also up there with one of the most common interview questions. But first, just like any algorithm, we need to first identify which pattern we need to use. And if we look at the title and if we look at the description, we see two very important clues. First things first, in the title, we see something along the lines of top K. The top K elements pattern is seen all throughout leak code. Top K should be the very first clue on how to solve this. The second is that in the description, we see, can you solve without sorting? And that is the nail in the coffin. We now know which algorithm to use or which algorithms I should say we should use. We could utilize a quick select or we can utilize an algorithm that's based on a heap. Both of these should be sufficient enough to pass a coding interview. But I must say, quick select is the superior algorithm because its time complexity is linear compared to the n log n that the heap has. Also, quick select is very handy to know because number one, most sort methods that you see in, let's say, C Sharp or Java are going to be built upon quick sort. Quick select is a derivative of quick sort. Also, this is one of the few cases that you will see in computer science where the time complexity actually improves with recursion. And it's very important to learn that just for that sake. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Enough chit chat. Let's talk about what we need to actually do. To put it simply, we're going to be given two things. We're going to be given a single number represented by K. Or we're also going to be given an array of numbers, multiple numbers. But what exactly does K mean? We usually see N, but what is, what's, what's with the K? Well, K, whenever you see the word K, think Olympics. Like what place did you come in? What position did you come in? If you came in first, you get the gold. If you came in second, I think you get the silver, third, bronze, and you, you get the picture. What position did you come in? And in our case, we're coming in second place, so to speak. So what we're gonna do is we're going to find the second largest element in the array, which in our case is going to be, you guessed it, five, because five is the second largest element in the array. Okay, you get the picture. How exactly do we solve this? We're going to solve this with quick select, but what's the first step? The first thing that we need to do is we need to partition the array. And that sounds very scary, but let me explain. A partition is basically the Bud Light of sorting. With a fully fledged beer, a fully fledged sort, there are many situations where you definitely want to sort. But number one, we can't sort. And number two, if we do a fully fledged sort, our time complexity is going to be really high. So what we do is we partition it. A partition works like this. First things first, we select a random number. Literally does not matter which number that you pick. You purposely pick a random number out of all of the numbers in the array. The second thing that you do is you divide the elements into less, equal, and greater. So what we will do is we will create three new lists. We will create three new dynamic arrays. Then what we'll do is we'll iterate through each number. And if the number is less than the pivot index, you guessed it, we're going to place it within our less than array. Then we'll move to the second element. We'll do the exact same thing. It's less than our pivot index. So we're going to place it in the less than array. And one is, you guessed it, less than five. So it's going to go in the less than array. Once we get to the actual pivot index, we'll go ahead, we'll place it into the equal array of our pivot index. We'll do six, six is greater than, and four is less than. And congratulations, you just figured out what a partition is. It's pretty much like we're sorting it, but not sequentially. We're sorting it to a certain extent, but we're, it doesn't have to be in sequential order. Hence the 
Bud Light metaphor. So congratulations, you just got through the hardest part. Learning how to partition is the hardest part of this algorithm. Everything's smooth sailing downhill from here. All that we need to do is just partition again. We need to partition one of these arrays that we created in the less than equal or greater. But which one? Well, in our greater list, in our greater array, we don't even have enough elements to determine the position of K. Our pivot index, which is the equal, isn't equal to the number that we're searching for. So the only logical solution is that our number could be in the less than array. And we're just going to do the same exact thing. We're just going to partition the less than array via recursion. And what we're going to do is, first things first, as we did before, we're going to determine a random pivot index. And let's just say the computer chose one as the new pivot index. So we partition from here. And just like before, we're going to iterate through the elements and we're going to sort them less, equal, and greater. Is three less than or equal or greater than one? obviously greater than so we're going to go ahead and put it in our greater we're going to do the same thing with two two once again is greater one is equal to the pivot index itself so we're going to put it in the equal and four you guessed it is greater so we'll go ahead and place it in the greater so obviously we need to keep partitioning number one the pivot index is not equal to the number that we want there's no numbers in the less so we're going to keep partitioning through the greater array. We can go ahead and get rid of all of these numbers that we just partitioned through. And we're going to, once again, partition the array. So the computer's going to set a random pivot index. Once again, you do not set the pivot index. The computer's going to randomly do it for you. And let's say the computer randomly chose two. We're going to iterate and we're going to partition once again. 3 is greater than 2, so we're going to place this in the greater. 2 is equal to the pivot index. And 4 is greater than the pivot index, so we're going to place it in the greater array. So the pivot index is still not equal to the kth largest element. There's no elements in the less. So once again, we're going to partition the greater. And this is going to be very simple. This is going to be a lot more simple than before. So there's only two elements left. And because we haven't found the kth largest element yet, we're going to keep partitioning. And the computer is going to choose a random number for you. Let's just say the computer chooses three. Three is our pivot index. It's not less than, it's equal to, so we're going to place it in the equal. Four is greater. We still haven't found our kth largest element yet. We're still going to recurse, but this time what's going to happen is that we're only going to have one element. And instead of actually partitioning, this one element is going to trigger our base case. And that pretty much means that we have found our kth largest element. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code this. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class and I'm going to call this solution. Within this solution, we're going to have two methods. The first is the method that leak code actually wants from us, the find kth largest. It's going to take in an integer array of nums, and it's going to also take in an integer called k. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a list of all of the nums that are given to us. And the way that we're going to do that is, first we're going to import the list, we're going to call this list, and then we're going to use a for loop to create the list. Now, the reason that we're going to add all of these numbers to a list instead of just using the actual array itself is that arrays are a pain in the ass to resize. And if we're splitting this up, if we're partitioning this into the less than, equal, greater, and we have to do this by arrays, it's going to be a major pain in the ass. So I'm just going to use a list. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to create our quick select. And what I'm going to do is just create a method called quick select, and we're going to pass in our list and we're also going to pass in our K. So now we need to build out our second method, which is going to be the quick select algorithm. We're going to call this quick select. It's going to take in a list of integers. We'll call this list of integers nums, and it's also going to take in an integer called K. 
So we're going to be using recursion. We're going to have a quick base case check. So if the size is equal to one, that means we don't want to continue partitioning. So we're going to go ahead and return the first element in the nums. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our pivot index. Now this isn't the actual number. This is just the index. What we're going to do is we're going to use random. We're going to check the size and it's going to generate a random number based off the size. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab that index out of the nums and that is our pivot. So we've gotten our pivot chosen. Now what we need to do is we need to sort those numbers based on the pivot. This is going to be kind of repetitive. So what we can do is we can copy and paste this, but we're going to say less. We're going to say equal, and then we're going to say greater. And these are all of the arrays that we're going to use to sort and partition the elements in the array. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the logic, the iteration that's going to place the element within the array into the appropriate less equal or greater. This is super easy. All that we're going to do, we don't even need to use a fully fledged for loop. We can just use a for loop with a colon in it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check if the number is greater than the pivot. We're going to place the number within the greater array list. And that's pretty much it. Pretty simple logic. Then we're going to do an else if, and if the number is less than the pivot, we're going to add to the less. And then finally, if the number is neither greater nor less, we're going to add it to our equal. It is equal to the pivot index. So we've got all of that logic taken care of. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the actual recursion. But remember, we have to choose what we're going to recurse over. We can't just recurse over anything. We have to recurse over the array list that we plan on partitioning again. We plan on searching again for the kth largest element in the array. But how exactly do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to check if k is less than or equal to the greater array list size. And if it's less than or equal to the greater array list size, that means there's a potential that the kth largest element in the array is within that data structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to recurse over that array list and we're going to pass in our greater and we're also going to pass in the k. So we've created logic to recurse and partition through the greater array list. Now we need to do the less array list. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to check if the greater dot size plus the equal dot size is less than K. And if it's less than K, we're going to recurse through the less array list. Here's what it's going to look like. We're going to pass in our less array list, but we also need to adjust K. The way that we're going to adjust K is we're going to minus the greater size and we're going to also minus the equal size because we need to account for elements that we skipped. Then finally, if none of that logic triggers, guess what? We can return our pivot. And that's pretty much it. So let's grab all of this code and we are going to toss this into Lika. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, I'm going to get out of full screen. Let's toss this into leak code and see what we get. So when we put this in leak code, and I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this except for the actual class. And I'm going to paste that in so we have both of our methods. Let's hit the run. Test case is accepted. Thank you, God. Let's also go ahead, check our time complexity. Time complexity is N. Thank you, God. Also, memory complexity is N as well, too. Congratulations. We have passed the interview. Whew. Hope you, hope you like that. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.